Thank you, JC. The title of the webinar is A Symmetropy Cascaded H Bridge Multilevel Inverter Advantages and Challenges. Oops. This is the agenda of the webinar. The first topic is the asymmetrically cascaded H-bridge multilevel inverter topology. And from now on, I will call it as asymmetric inverter or asymmetric multilevel inverter for simplicity. The second topic is the staircase modulation. And I'll try to explain why we need to use the staircase modulation to turn on and off the transistor of the transistors of the topology. And a common question that arises is why not use PWM in such a topology? I'll try to give you some reasons why not to use PWM. Later, we we'll see a little bit about the power distribution and try to understand how the power is distributed within the topology. Let's take a fast look at the DC link currents. Then we go to the control section that we see a current control and voltage control for grid connected mode and isolated mode, respectively. Then I'll talk a little bit about applications and challenges. Of course, from my, my point of view, later some conclusions, and then we go to the question and answer sections. And I'll be so glad to answer some questions in the end of this webinar. If you have some question, please type it in on the chat and then we can discuss later. Okay, so that, the topology, the power structure of the multilevel inverter. This is the, the topology of the asymmetric multilevel inverter. Some observations here. There are 12 transistors. We have three H bridge converters. The output is series connected. A feature here of the, this topology is that they use, it uses unequal DC sources. And these DC sources are scaled in the ratio of one to six or one, three, nine. It means that if you have here a voltage equals to VDC, this voltage here must be two times higher than this. And this must be six times higher than this. This makes the Topology to be scaled in one to six. Or alternatively, you can have one, three, nine, and it means that the voltage I scaled in such a order here. One, three, nine. Okay. These are some features of the topology. You have unequal DC sources and they must be isolated from each other. Another observation is that we can define modules. So you can say upper module for the topper here, H bridge converter. We can define a central module and lower module. This makes easier to talk about the topology. And we have three modules. And a common question also that arises frequently is why not use two modules only or four modules or more modules, okay? So the asymmetric multilevel inverter has three modules and why not use four and more? I'll try to answer it in a next slide. Because we, we know that in multilevel, it's common to find several modules. If you take a look at an example, the MMC multilevel inverter, we see that there are eight, 10 modules. If you see the symmetric topology also, you can find a lot of modules. But this in particular, there are, there are three modules only. And I'll try to answer why not use four and more and not use two. Let's first take a look at the star case modulation and, and try to understand how the transistors turns on, on and off, okay? So the principle of operation of the star case modulation is based on comparisons. This is quite similar to the PWM. You compare two signals, but in this case, the reference is compared with DC values. Let's see. So here is the reference. So we have here a sinusoidal reference. In PWM, you usually compare the reference with a triangular waveform, but in this case, we, we are comparing the voltage reference with two distinct DC values. Okay, so the comparison is with two distinct DC values, a positive and negative. And how to do that is quite similar to the PWM, again, but using DC constant here. If you have here the sinusoidal reference, is what you want that the output of the inverter. This signal is compared with two distinct DC values, and then you have here the signals for the switches for the upper module. Okay. 
actually quite common to the PWM, except that we are not using triangular form here, triangular waveform, but DC values. Then again, we have the four signals for the transistor for the upper module. If you continue here with some basic algebra, we can produce such a waveform here. Okay. This is actually just the computation of some algebra right after you are generating the signals for the switches. Then the result of this subtraction here is such a waveform. Okay. It's actually based on this waveform, a sinusoid minus this one. The result is such a waveform. And this will be the reference, which is called reference two for the transistors for the central module. And also I will compare again with two new DC values, and then I will produce this signal for the transistors for the central module. And this is the final configuration of the staircase modulation. Let's try to understand it quite closer. Okay. The first part here is just a copy and paste from this part. So I have here the sinusoid reference, and later I have such a reference signal. I already have the signals for the switches for the upper module, and this will be compared with another two distinct DC values, and then I have the signals for the switches of the central module. If I continue this in a similar, similar way, taking this reference, subtract from this, I have a new reference here, and then I compare again with two DC values, and then I have all the signals for the lower module. In such a way, I have all the signals for the transistors for the 12 transistors found in the modulation in the, stair, in the asymmetric inverter. Okay. If I have more modules, I could cascade this up to reach all the modules. Okay. This is the basic principle of the star case modulation. Again, it's also based on comparison, but now the references changes according to the module and they are always compared with DC values. And let's see what happens if I apply such a star case modulation. Here is the inverter again, which is ratio here in one to six. If I apply that block diagram in the previous slide, what I'm gonna see at the output of each module is these voltages here. Okay, so the first one here, the upper module. If I apply that pattern, I can see such a terminal voltage for the upper module. This is for the central module, and this is for the lower module. These are the output voltage when I use the staircase modulation. If I combine all of them, they are series connected here, I see such a terminal waveform. Okay, so collecting from these two here, you are just adding these three waveforms, we see that this is the final result of the terminal voltage of the star case modulation applied in the asymmetric multilevel inverter. What you can see here, if you use one to six ratio, we can count 19 levels. If we are using one, three, nine, we can count 27 levels. And actually this is very close to sinusoidal. Notice that we are not having filter yet. This is just the terminal voltage very close to sinusoidal. It means that you have low filtering requirements. If your final target is, is a sinusoidal waveform, we have a red very close waveform to the sinusoidal, just turning on and off the transistor using the staircase modulation. And back to the question, why not use two, four or more modules? Again, this question is because in multilab inverter we often see several of modules like 10, 8, like we found in MMC inverter and so on. Okay. So in this case, why not use two modules, four or more? Let's start with four modules. Why not use one more module here? Because it is unnecessary. You have already a sinusoidal waveform using three modules. If you include one more right here, you reach, if you are using this scale for instance, 139, and then you include another one here, you will reach 81 levels at the output voltage. And this is quite unnecessary because with three modules, you have already a sinusoidal waveform. Okay. You make the output voltage much more sinusoidal than this. Actually, this is unnecessary. It doesn't work to include four transistors, another isolated DC source to make this more sinusoidal. This is actually 
a red sinusoidal, and this is the answer for the question. We don't use four modules or more because with three we have a red a sinusoidal waveform. You can see here the spectrum, which is quite clean, and it is unnecessary to use more modules. And yeah. if you are using just two, let's suppose we remove here the upper module and then have just two modules. Again, the star case modulation maybe is not the good option because if you're using eight transistors, it is better to return to the PWM modulation. Okay, so two modules is also not good because, of course, you don't have a sinusoidal waveform at the output. You have just the combination of this and this, and the result will be not so good. So it's, bad, it's better to return to the PWM or modify the topology use other configuration, okay? So four modules is unnecessary because you make this more sinusoidal, which is unnecessary. And two modules, it's better using other modulation like the PWM, okay? And again, with uh, the question, why not maybe search topology? Let's make a fast background. Can you hear me? Yes, Professor, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, I saw a message here on my screen. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. let's carry on. Continue. They start please. That, okay, can I carry on? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. Staircase modulation, and uh, the question was, why not use PWM? Why you need to use the staircase modulation in the symmetric multilevel inverter? Let's pass very fast here for a background of the PWM. Now, considering not the multilevel inverter, but a, a classical H-bridge converter using the classical PWM, what we see at the output is such a waveform. And if you consider it such a waveform within a sinusoidal reference, just for refer reference, let's see what we have here. And, uh, oops, here. Okay, so this is the pattern for the output voltage of a classical H-bridge converter. We are familiar with that. And if we consider plotting together with a sinusoidal reference, we can see here a lot of commutations, okay? A lot of turns on and off of the transistors. And we know if we plot voltage and current across one transistor, we know that for every transition, there are there is switching losses, okay? There is a moment here where you have voltage and current. This is, again, the voltage and current across one transistor. And if you are using PWM, Supposing a frequency switch equals to 20 kilohertz, you are gonna see thousands of commutations within one cycle. Again, considering here one cycle of the sinusoidal, we can count here thousands of commutations. And of course, you have such a considerable switching losses. Again, because you are turning on and off thousands of times the transistors. This I'm sure is familiar for all of us, but keep this in mind. Look how many transitions we have within a sinusoidal waveform. If you go back to the asymmetric multilevel inverter, and if you see here the terminal voltage of the upper module, we see such a pattern here. In a similar way, if we plot with the sinusoidal waveform, we see how many transitions happen here within one cycle. We, we can even count here. We have one, two, three, four, four transitions within one cycle. Okay, so we have few commutations within one cycle. This is one of the greatest advantage of using such a multilevel inverter. We have few commutations within one cycle. Of course, we have lower switching losses and compared to the PWM. And actually, this upper module using the staircase modulation is switching at 50 or 60 hertz, depending on your grid frequency. And as you can see in the next slides, the upper module may process 80% of the total processing power. And what this mean? It means that if I'm setting here a reference, a power reference to be injected into the grid, for instance, let's suppose I'm setting here one kilowatt as reference for active power. And this one kilowatt as reference will be distributed among these modules here. And we'll see later that this upper module, as it has the higher voltage, may process 80% of the total power set on this variable here. And what we have here? We have that this is the main advantage of using such topology. We are processing 80% of the total 
power of this reference with few commutations. We will see only four commutations within one cycle. And again, we have, we have, uh, we have low filtering requirements. This is the main advantage of using this topology. Process 80% of the total power, few commutations, lower losses, and the output filter is still low order and low volume. Even the central and lower modules have few commutations. If I plot here again, the waveforms showed in the previous slides, we see here that there are few commutations within one cycle. And again, this is the terminal voltage. Okay, summarizing. You are processing almost 80% of the total power with a considerably low switching frequency, and you don't have to need a, a high volume filter at the output. And this is the main advantage of the staircase modulation. And the answer for the question, why not use PWM? Because if I employ PWM instead of staircase modulation, the PWM will lose the advantages of the asymmetric topology. In the PWM, as I saw, I will have here thousands of commutations in this module here, which is not attractive. If you employ the PWM in this topology, to make it unfeasible, it's better to replace it to another structure, okay? So there is a combination that you need to use this structure here with three modules and you need to employ staircase. If you apply PWM, again, you will face thousands of commutations, which is not good. Actually, again, any modifications in the topology probably make it unfeasible. If you are thinking about changing something here, you probably face a lot of transitions in the modules, make it, make, make it unfeasible. Okay, this is the answer of uh, why not choose PWM. This is a common question. We often see that uh, very often people ask me about not, why not choose PWM. Again, because I don't want to have a lot of commutations in this module here. I just want to have four commutations. Okay, what's this? and power distribution okay let's return to that discussion what's going on okay let's return to that discussion can you hear me uh, with high quality yes yes we can hear you yes so we can hear okay because there are some messages here on my screen okay let's go on in case you don't can hear me very well you can just Send we a message. Hear, we can hear you, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, just a moment. Okay. Okay, power distribution. If we, uh, now the inverter is connected to the grid. There is here a point of common coupling and there is an output filter which is just an inductor, a very low inductor because we have a red sinusoidal, very close sinusoidal waveform at this point. This filter is quite low. Then I set a reference for power injection. I want to inject, for instance, again, one kilowatt. How this one kilowatt is split into these three modules here. Okay. How much power is processed in the upper? How much process power is processed in the central and, and the lower? And this is what we are going to see now. The power distribution within the asymmetric topology is dependent on the switching function and also on the modulation index. And one of the main drawbacks of this topology is that this power distribution is nonlinear. Okay, so we have here some equations. This is the power processed at the upper mod. You can see here an equation. You can see that is dependent on the modulation index. You can see here also that is dependent on the switching function. And this is the equation for the switching function for the upper mod. In a similar manner, this is the power processed at the central module. We also have here the switching function for the central module. And we also have here the power processed at the lower module. And this is the equation of the switching function for the lower module. Of course, they are completely nonlinear. I won't get into details of this equation, but if you are interested to understand them, you can take a look at my paper later that I published in the IEEE transactional industry application last year. Okay. This equation are quite crazy, but it shows the nonlinear behavior of the modulation 
the staircase modulation and how the power and how the power is distributed. And again, this is the main drawback of the asymmetric topology. It's completely nonlinear, and this is not easy to handle. It. Let's try to understand those equations here in charts. Again, the inverter is right here, connected to the grid. And these are two charts. This is valid for the voltage ratio one to six, and this for one, three, nine. Okay, let's consider just this because they are quite similar. So we have here the voltage ratio one to six, and we can see here four curves, what they are. This curve here, this curve here is the total power, so it's the power that I'm injecting to the grid. This line shows the power processed at the upper module, and this shows the power processed at the central module, and this shows the power processed at the lower module. Some observations for, yeah, here is the modulation index. Let's consider that we are using modulation index equals to one, what this chart can tell us. So if I'm using one as modulation index, the upper module will process here one, 100%. So I'm injecting here 100% of the power. The upper module can process 80% for one to six. And in 139, you can see here the power being processed at the upper module is equal to 83. Okay. Again, this power is processing 80% of the total power, which is really good. There are moments where the when the processed power is negative in this oh, sorry. Fine, fine. And the negative, okay? Yeah. In the negative in the central and lower modules called regenerative power. Okay. Again, there are moments when the processed power is negative in the central and lower modules, which we call regenerative power. If you take a close look at this chart again, here is the zero. Okay. We see that there are curves below the zero. And let's suppose at this point here, let's suppose the modulation index is, is M A. 0 0.82 83 for instance so this is the power injecting to the grid this is the power processed at the upper module this is the power processed at the central module and this is the for the lower module and you can see that the lower module has negative power and this is not good because setting a reference to inject the power into the grid this module will deliver power this will deliver power, but this is consuming power. And this is actually a contradiction. I have a negative power being processed at this lower module, which is not good, okay? This will inject, inject, and this will consume. This is one of the greatest advantages of uh, drawbacks of this topology, the regions where you have negative power. And the range where the three modules process positive power simultaneously is very limited. If you take a, a close look at this chart again, there are a short region here where the three curves is above the zero. And we see that is from this point to this. For one to six, the range comprises the modulation index from 0 0.94 to 1. And in 139 is from 0 0.96 to 1. There is also a short range around this point, but this we can neglect. Okay. The operation region for this multilevel inverter is quite limited. You need to assure that your modulation index is within the range of 0 0.94 to 1. And then in this case, you have what we expect positive power for the three modules. When you set a reference, this will process such a power, this will process such a power, and this one, all of them are positive, okay? We need to avoid the operation of the multilevel inverter in this, this region because one module will consume power instead of injecting. And another interesting observation is that the lower module described by this curve here, process at most 4%, 4.2% of the total power. So this, this lower module here, as it has the lower voltage, will process only 4% of the total power. And in 139, this is quite low, is 3.2%. And why this is important? Because since you are processing a few amount of power, 
4% of the total, you can modify maybe this lower module to improve this curve here. Because modifications in the lower module is not so hard as in the upper module. In the upper module, you want just few commutations because it processes 80%, but in the lower module, you can handle as you want. You can change the structure, you can change how to turn on and off the transistor within the lower module, okay? 4% of the total power is not a significant amount of value, so you can change the structure of the lower module. And you can make this much better in order to, of course, improve, enlarge here the operation region of the inverter. Let's try to understand a little bit more about this power distribution and why there is a contradiction when you are injecting power and one module is consuming power. Suppose now that we are using batteries in the DC sources, so we have here a upper battery bank, the central battery bank, and the lower battery bank, and then you decide to charge the batteries. Then you set a reference to charge the batteries. This, depending of course, the modulation index, this battery bank is being charging, this is charging, and while this is discharging, and this actually is not good for the BMS. The BMS may be prepared for that. You are charging the batteries, but there is already a bank completely charged and it is discharging. This must be avoided. Of course, you need to employ some limitations in the modulation index in order to avoid it, avoid that. Uh, but the reason for this slide is to show you how this is quite complicated. If you are charging, one maybe one module is being discharged, and this is not easy to be solved. And of course, you need to apply some limitations in order to avoid that. And this is much more harder when you are using capacitors instead of DC sources. Let's suppose that we remove here the DC sources, replace them by capacitors, and we try to control the capacitor voltage as, uh, as found in our active filter applications. You need to control the DC link voltage. This is also quite confusing for the DC controller because one capacitor is being charged. This is being charged while this is being discharged. And the DC link control is actually a very high challenge to control the DC link voltage of this topology. Of course, this is the main drawback of this topology. Having a moments where you need such a contradiction in power, this makes this topology really a challenge. And this, of course, is the main drawback of this topology operating in regions where you have negative power, regenerative power, you need to deal with very close, very carefully. If you take a look at the DC link currents, this is for the lower module, this is for the central, and this is for the upper. Okay? These currents are the DC link, that the currents that is being delivered by the DC sources. We can see here that the, taking, they are pulsating, of course, for the lower module, they are pulsating, but special care is also for the upper module. We see here that there are a few number of commutations, which is good because again, the upper module is processing greatest part of the power. And we have here a kind of not pulsating like this in the upper module. We don't see the pulsating current as we see in the PWM applications. And of course we can employ some capacitors in parallel to the DC source in order to make this soft. But this is for just for uh, acquaintance of that the DC link currents are quite not a lot, uh, with no much commutations turned on and off. Okay, and uh, let's go to the closed loop current control. Now the, the inverter is still connected to the grid. I'm controlling the output current, the filter is still an inductor. And what we need to know, this system is completely nonlinear. We saw on that equations that the switching functions are completely nonlinear. And of course, any nonlinear system can be linearized for an operation point. Then we can apply classical linear controllers. One thing that the controller must assure is that the modulation index is within from 0 0.9421. To 1. And then we avoid such a contradiction in power distribution the controller must be able to operate in such a region. This is quite common. We always look for applications in power electronics that the modulation index is much more closer 
to one, much closer to one, is quite interesting. After assuring this, the linearization at an operation point, the modulation in, in within this range, you can apply a linear controller. And I did that, I'll show you later, okay? And uh, fortunately, the system has low bandwidth because this voltage here is already almost sinusoidal. We saw at the beginning of the webinar, this voltage is quite sinusoidal, so the bandwidth of the controller is quite low. And after assuring all of them, I can use the classical block diagram of controlling the current. We have here the inverter plus output filter, the plant, the staircase modulator, and I'm using here a current controller as a PI controller with a feed forward, vo uh, feed forward path of the PCC voltage. Let's take a look at some results. Here in the left, I have simulation results, and here I have experimental results. In red, I have the reference for the output current, and in green, the actually the output current. This is valid out for the experimental results. Um, sorry, what, can, what you can see here. For sinusoidal reference, initially the reference is sinusoidal. We see that the output current is following the reference signal. And then at this moment here, I set the inverters to operate as active filter and the current is distorted. The reference changes to a distorted waveform, but we can see that the output current is still following the reference with neglectable steady state here. This is also valid for the experimental result. And if you take a look at the terminal voltage of each module, as well as the terminal voltage of the inverter, we can see the same waveform of the staircase modulation. Few commutations at the upper module, and I insist that this is the main advantage of such a topology. I'm making the output current to follow its reference, and I'm, have, I'm having here few commutations within one cycle of sinusoid reference, okay? But take a special care here because I'm using a PI controller linearized at a, such a point and it is enough to make the output current to follow its reference signal. And there is an interesting observation here, which is the proportional gain of the current controller plays a important role in the structure because if I increase the proportional gain at a high values, in order, for instance, to make the controller faster, this may present a oscillatory behavior here, not oscillatory, a lot of commutations at the upper module. Remember that this is the voltage of this upper module. If I increase too much the proportional gain, I can observe here a lot of commutations as commonly found in PWM, but this must be avoided. And this is actually some very interesting to be taking into account when designing a current controller for this operation. It, it doesn't, yeah, it cannot be so high because you may present here a lot of commutations at the upper module, okay? And this will make the topology unfeasible. If you are, if you have a lot of thousands of commutations of this upper module, again, it's better to think carefully and try to use another topology, another modulation, okay? It needs to be, uh, assure that the number of commutations is relatively low when you are employing controller. Improve, increase too much the proportional gain, you may face such a lot of commutations, make it unfeasible. To the control to voltage now, now we replace the grid by a nonlinear load. Now I'm controlling the PCC voltage, amplitude and frequency. Of course, you need to modify the output filter, before, uh, previously, the, the filter was just an inductor. Now I have all C filter. But again, they are quite low volume, very low values, because this is almost sinusoidal, and this pair here is completely low volume. And I need to control now the voltage. I'm measuring here the voltage to control such a variable. And I tested two, PI, two types of controller. One is a PR, and another one is a cascaded PI with two loops. This is the block diagram for the PCC voltage. Notice that is a classical diagram. We have here the inverter plus the LC filter, which is the plant. The modulator is still the staircase modulation. And now I have here the AC voltage control. And for the two loops, 
I'm using here the current control loop or as inner loop and the output voltage as outer loop. Again, this is quite common, this is quite traditional that it shows that the linearization is an interesting aspect of this topology. If you linearize correctly, you can employ here a classical controllers. I'm using here in this second diagram, two PIs controller. If you have more interest in these controllers, you can take a look at one of my papers that I published in the I travel with transaction power electronics in the year of 2018. Some results. In the left, for the PR controller, PR controller. In the right, the two cascaded PI controllers. You can see here the reference and the output voltage. There is a step in the reference, and here is the zoom of this box. We can clearly see here that the output voltage follow its reference signal very well. This is valid for the PR controller, and this is also valid for the two cascaded PI controller. Okay, PR, proportional resonance, and proportional integrator controller. Both of them follow the reference very well. These results are presented in the same paper I said in the last slide. Okay, hope you are having a great talk. Let's go to the applications and challenges. I separated here two main parts positive and negative. These applications here are more prone to be realized with such an invert, and this is less prone. Let's take a, a look at this. So applications. First of all, this inverter is good for applications that you have modulation index varying from 0 0.9421. To that sounds a good uh, solution for such application again you need to assure that your application is within this range this inverter is attractive to applications that handle block power because again you are processing 80 percent of the total power with the upper module switching at considerably low frequency and the output feature is very low so applications for that you need to handle a high volume of power a high amount of power this topology is attractive. Applications in medium voltage industrial grid, of course, multi-level inverter is more prone to be applied in medium voltage because you can have here different technologies for the transistors. This no, doesn't necessarily need to be the same technology of this. This process much more power, this much less, so you can have different technologies of the transistors. Battery-based storage, this uh, inverter is quite a good candidate for battery based storage because when you look for efficiency again you have low switching losses for the 80 percent of the total power also for applications for fuel cells again all applications you need to assure that your modulation index is within this range in order to avoid such a consuming power in one of the modules statcom I think this is the most promising applications for such a topology because in Statcom, you are compensating reactive power. And of course, you don't use DC sources, you are using capacitors. And how the, and as the output current is sinusoidal, it's not hard to control the DC link voltage for the Statcom. Okay? Don't use DC sources, use capacitor, you need to control, but since the output current is only sinusoidal, it will be not so hard to control the DC link. Again, this I think is the most promising application for such a topology. And of course, you can also have some motor drivers. Again, you don't need to use filter for motor drives and this voltage is quite sinusoidal. You don't neither use filter in PWM applications. Imagine here that the voltage is quite sinusoidal very good for motor driver applications and some applications that are valid uh there are it's really hard to be employed is first of all applications that need to a large range of the modulation index if you need in your application that the modulation index changes from zero to one for instance you need to consider it it think it carefully if you need to use if you want to use such a topology this won't be so good because again you have negative power in one of the modules and active filter also i consider not a good application because 
inactive filter, you will don't use DC sources. You are going to use capacitors and need to control the DC link. And but in active filter, you have low order harmonics, and you have also low order harmonics in the voltage. This makes active power not only in the fundamental but also in the harmonics. This is really hard to control the DC link of active filters application. Of course, if we include here a resistor to burn the energy would be a solution, but this is something that we need to avoid, inclusion of resistors in parallel of the capacitors. Okay? PV systems is also not good because it's not trivial for MPT applications. If you replace this for solar panels, this won't be so good. It's not so trivial to employ this kind of algorithm. And if you think about including here the CDC converter as we commonly found in PV system, this won't be good again, uh, won't be good too, because the inclusion here of the CDC converter switching at high frequency makes the inverter unfeasible. If you are already using transistors to hold such a power, it's better to use another topology, another multi-level inverter, the symmetric or the MMC as well as for the wind generator system. This topology is not good because you have here uh, isolated DC sources and probably if this inverter is the grid side inverter. Uh, hello, Prof. 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 Hi, GC. I think your connection got uh, disturbed. Last uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just repeat the wind generator system? Last point, yeah. Ah, yes, I saw that the my screen locked here. Okay, and the, about the PV system, I think you heard. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. The uh, wind generator system is also this topology is not so good because considering that this inverter is the grid side converter for a complete back-to-back -back wind generator system. Since you need isolated DC sources at the DC link, this is not attractive. So therefore, this inverter is not good for wind generator system. Of course, this is my point of view. You may agree or not, but again, there are a lot of challenges that must be solved before using this topology in others applications. Okay, some conclusions. Uh, the main advantage of the asymmetric multi-level inverter is on the upper module. The upper module plays the, the, the most important feature of the, 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 the topology. It processes 80% of the total power. The switching frequency of the upper module is considerably low. You are switching it as at 50 or 60 Hertz. And the topology needs no high order and high volume filters. These are the main advantages of the asymmetric topology as we saw. The upper module is what we need to look when applying some applications with using this topology. And the drawbacks that we saw that the power distribution among the module is nonlinear. This of course is the main drawback to control such a power is not easy. Another conclusion here is that the topology and the modulation should be kept unchanged. If you try to modify the modulation strategy or try to modify the, the inverter, this make the topology unfeasible. And I think you should considerably, carefully consider using other topology, okay? I, this is what I said. Any modification in the structure or in the modulation may be investigated carefully. Again, if you are, let's let's include here this CDC converter in order to solve one thing or another. This make the inverter unfeasible. And after several years, several years studying such a topology, I'm afraid that the drawbacks may overlap the advantages. Okay, of course, I'm here to tell you the truth. And the drawbacks of having nonlinear power distribution may overlap all the advantages listed at the beginning of this slide. And I don't consider it as the first option. You should think carefully when using this topology because, again, the nonlinear distribution of power is quite not easy to solve. 
And of course, there is a challenge also on employing nonlinear contrast strategy, which is good for future works. I'm using nonlinear controllers, so I have such uh, limitations in the operation. But if you want to use the whole range of modulation index, of course, you need to apply here some nonlinear control and deal with the nonlinearities of the topology. Okay. So I'd like to, I think we'll have a great, great talk in 45 minutes. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for Professor Dr. JC for the invitation, as well as for the IEEE Bangalore section. Also for the Power Electronics Society, which I am a member, and also for the Industrial Electronics Society. Okay, if you can I have here my contact, you can send me an email if you have some questions. This is my institutional webpage. You can go there and see some materials available there. I have also a YouTube channel where frequently I post, uh, post some lectures of Power Electronics. And thank you for watching this webinar. I hope you had a great talk and I'll be so glad to answer you some questions. Yeah, yeah, you can type yeah. the questions on the yeah. panel. Thank and in you. case I don't have time, I, I will answer it later. But let's talk a little bit thank you. Thank about you. Thank the questions. Thank you for the detailed talk, greatly appreciated. Uh, Ratna, uh, can you please unmute and go ahead? Ratna has a question. Okay, the question is, uh, yeah, please go ahead, please go ahead. Uh, I said, uh, how the application, like uh, how we are generating the DC sources? Like uh, how we are getting the DC sources? So, of course, if, uh, if we take PV models, uh, at last in the applications you had said, like uh, for PV models, it is not applied. So if at all, if you want to apply for PV models, how it can be done? Yes, yes, actually, if you apply for this uh, PV panels, first of all, you don't need to include here uh, this CDC converter. And of course, you need to apply the maximum point PowerPoint tracking algorithm within the control strategy that runs the, 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 the current controller. Okay, so you have here a direct connection of PV panels you need to assure that they are voltage scaled in 126 or 139. And most importantly, you need to uh, guarantee such an operation region here in order not to have a consumption of power in one of the PV panels. Yeah, I think professor, the question is in real life, how do you get these unequal voltages of this ratio, one, two, six? How do you ah, get okay, okay. Yes, fuel cells is one option, of course, very hard to find, but battery-based storage is an option. If you are using here a battery bank with lithium-ion batteries, which is equal to 3.6 voltage volts, you can apply here. Uh, in my case, I was using, uh, in this case here, two batteries, which result in 24 volts. This has four batteries, uh, lead acid batteries, which result in 48 volts. And this is 144 voltage, which means 12 batteries series connected. But again, this, uh, I agree with you. It's a challenge to have here uh, an equal isolated DC sources made by PV or batteries. Batteries, I think is the most promising because as the voltage is 3.6 for each cell, you can arrange here serious connections in order to have such unequal DC sources. Hope I answered your question, but I, I agree with you. This is also a challenge of this topology. Okay. Nikhil, go ahead. Nikhil. Uh, good, uh, good evening, sir. So I have a couple of doubts. Uh, so uh, can we go back to the page where we have discussed the sta staircase uh, modulation? Staircase modulation. Let's go here. Uh, so uh, we have compared the VRF with DC value. So what is the uh, what is the uh, means, uh, how do you decide the DC value in first case? And yeah, for, uh, first we will uh, discuss about first stage. What is the DC value required for the first stage of the staircase modulation? Yes, and uh, it depends on the your reference. Here I'm using a reference which is the total in order to have modulation equals to one. 
my amplitude here is just one plus two plus six the VDC. I'm just adding all these voltages here, okay? And this makes the amplitude of the reference. Then, in order to compare with these DC values, they must be equal to this one, half of this. So we have here six VDC over two. This is half of this and negative for this, okay? For the next stage is the half of this. Actually, answering your question, the DC values here is to be used half of this DC sources. If you are, of course, considering the amplitude equals to one, the summation of one to six. Okay. If you are considered one, you just split it into one over the sum of them. But these DC values here are related to the values that you are using in the DC sources. Okay. It's okay for you. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the thought behind this staircase uh, modulation? Is this your proposal uh, proposition or it has been discussed uh, previously by some uh, researchers? Yes. No, this is quite traditional. Okay. This you can find in a lot of papers. This is quite old uh, actually. Uh, the, any references for this? Any reference books? Nickel. Nickel. Part of reference. Yeah, yes. Yes. So it is fine. Uh, thanks. Uh, Kannan. Can you please go ahead, Kannan? Yes, just uh, find, uh, end, ending the, the answer. I don't remember to see some books having this material, but I can see some papers. If you go to my paper, I see a lot of other papers that use similar uh, uh, diagrams, okay? And yes. this is actually is traditional, very, very old and quite classical. And you can find, I don't remember books, but papers you can ch ch see very often. If you take a look at my paper, understanding the staircase modulation, there are a lot of more details about that. Okay. 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 And, and one more question. So is there any requirement of dead, uh, dead band uh, requirement so that if, uh, in one leg, the two switches uh, may get short circuited? Is there any case uh, such in this uh, topology? Yes, yes. Uh, this is quite common for any topology. And the, that the, that time usually uh, is employed in hardware. But you need to agree with me that since this, there are few commutations in the in the in one cycle of operation. There are here a quite good approach for applying that time. If you consider if the PWM which switches at uh, thousands of kilohertz this will be much easier to employ at that time. But actually, I usually employ that time in the hardware, right after you have here the pulses generated. The hardware that turn on and off the transistors must employ such a that time. But this is quite equal to any other application. Yeah, Hope I you, answered you, your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Can I please go ahead? Okay, sir, hello. Yes, yes, we can hear oh, hello. you. Uh, can we uh, include a single input multiple output convert along with uh, other than the batteries so that we can use an EV drives with a single battery pack and we are producing multi output uh, from the isolated topology, any, any isolated like flyback or something? Uh, like a paper, uh, Juan Dixon, I uh, saw a paper in uh, 2011. I have sent to Tiago, sir, that paper. Uh, hi, camera. Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand you. I'll post the question again in the chat, uh, Professor. You can just check it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just check the chat. That was the question. Basically, single input, multiple output. Good output converter. Can, can you type, camera? Yeah. Can so, yeah, basically he's asking about uh, using a single input, multiple output converter for feeding DC sources. I, I'm sorry, I, I think I lost here. I was reading to the chat. Yes, yes. Can you read the most recent chat? Ah, yes, yes, now I can see. Can you use a single input, multiple output converter for feeding DC to each eight bridge? Uh, Yes, yes, actually this is possible. I have never thought about that, but 
again, if you have here a input multiple output converter, of course you need to use transistors for that. Okay. Okay. If you are using here an input converter, one of the transistors that make this as output will switch probably at thousands of kilohertz. Okay. So you need to have a transistor at the preview stage that holds this voltage here. Okay. okay. This is an option, but since you have already using a transistor or a, a lot of them to hold such a voltage, I think in my point of view, it's better to remove all of them, take the transistors that we are using here and make a, an MMC inverter or even the symmetric um, uh, topology, okay? But it, it is an option. But again, if you think globally on the application, maybe the transistor that you are using that switches at high frequency, you can take all the elements and try to use another topology. But answering your question, I think it is possible using here an input converter with uh, several outputs like the flyback okay. and producing this one. But again, if you think totally on the efficiency, maybe not so attractive as having another topology like the conventional H bridge. But okay, thank you for the question. We are very interesting. Okay, answer. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Rajkumar, Kodari Rajkumar. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Sir, uh, is cascade, uh, asymmetrical cascade HD converters uh, effectively work in uh, unbalanced grid condition uh, like uh, in uh, DVR application, custom power devices? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm having uh, problems here to hear. If yeah. You can type the question. Professor, I have posted in the chat, you can see optimal switching frequency. Yeah. Okay, optimal switching frequency for a multi-level inverter. Yes, yes, this is one of the challenges of the, the topology. Uh, you, you, you can employ, of course, okay. optimal switching algorithm, but again, you need to be sure that the upper module won't have more than still five commutations in the operation, okay? Again, if you employ here something, modifications in order to optimally switch the transistors, this must be uh, sure. You must be sure that the upper mode terminal voltage won't have a lot of commutations. If you are sure about that, this actually is a good point. Okay, hope I answered, but of, uh, the answer is yes. You can try to employ, but always looking carefully at the output at the upper module if you don't have a lot of commutations. This and this won't, it's not a problem because if you you saw that this module process 4%, this process 17% and almost 17%, almost 4%. And then if you switch this at high frequency, this is not a problem, but this is the problem, okay? If you having a lot of commutations here, your algorithm may not be a good choice. But the answer is yes, but look carefully at the output voltage of the inverter. Yes. And this is actually is a challenge. You need to apply here a, like a fuzzy controller or artificial neural network. It's okay, but you need to be careful about such a advantage. This may not be lose, lost, okay? okay. okay. Yeah. Professor, there's one more question in the chat. EV drives with open-ended PMSM machines. You can just add. Yes, you can use. Uh, sir, sir, I have one more question, sir. Uh, sir uh, is is uh, asymmetrical cascade HD converters uh, useful for the TVR application? Custom power devices. Uh, TVR dynamic voltage resistor. Uh, okay, please type your question because yeah, yeah. type the question. Yeah, uh, now, Professor Kaushik, are you here? Yes, let me answer this first. Okay. Can we use the symmetric cascade H grid for electrical vehicle drivers with open-ended permanent magnet synchronous machine? The answer is yes, but of course, as one of the questions, the challenge will be to have such a, an equal DC sources isolated available. If you have such a DC sources available, of course, you can use for 
open ended but again the challenge is to have this is quite not common to have uh, isolated unequal dc sources available all the time okay professor yeah professor kaushik uh, are you here yeah yeah, yeah. hello yeah uh, very nice presentation thank you uh, i have one quick few quick questions can you hear me yes go ahead yeah yeah, yeah. see one thing is that uh, does this power distribution depends upon the power factor of the load or the load current the yes. power, right yes yes this is also dependent on the let's go here this is also dependent on the power factory of course if you power set in your uh, reference what you can see here is uh the dc link current will be quite you got into the negative part of the dc the, the value but of course uh, it is dependent right so if you if you see because uh, this uh, the top one is not switching that often right so the uh, the you will have a low frequencies in the current of the dieseling side current also right so yes. that capacitor may be a little bigger yes you see here uh, the dc right. current what your question no i am saying that the capacitor size right so which will actually ah, yes. filter this current that that will be a little bigger but of course it is processing more power right yes yeah, so, go ahead go ahead right so now i have one control related question like see in uh, in the averaging what we do right uh, like in case of pwm converter you you are you can apply the averaged voltage to take the control action over the switching cycle right here yes. you do not have an idea like that it is just uh, based on the level it is switching right so yes. if controller suddenly asks a change in the voltage right sorry so the controller suddenly asks in the change in the voltage if that change in the voltage is high then you see multiple uh, units will be switching at the same time or yes. in a short time right so that yes. can lead to uh, some high frequency temporary high frequency transitions in the module yes, yes. right yeah yes this yeah. is also one of the challenges uh, during, right 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 yes i agree with you this is right. something that we need to avoid because this is it's making the topology be unfeasible and again you need to actually look carefully when you change uh, ref change the reference or when the controller needs actually a high high speed response but i agree with you we need to avoid this of course if you have in here thousands of commutations one may ask why not you use a red pwm with modular multilevel converter or the symmetric which is much better distributed in power again this is also a challenge we need to avoid this but i agree with you good good observation okay thank you thank you prof any other question let's see one of the question here where we was does the power distribution depends on power factor yes here in a symmetric cascade multi-level converter effectively work in dvr applications yes i think this is also one of the for me one of the most promising application for this converter because in this case if you are considering only supplying reactive power to compensate the voltage of course if you have such a strategy of injecting reactive power only in order to make this voltage more stable and in a acceptable level we need to use capacitors so the reference will be one to six and the controller of the capacitor is actually not so hard and this of course i think is one of the most promising application of this topology as well as for the stat static compensator supposing that again you are injecting only reactive power reactive power in order to uh, support such a voltage and these sources are not need we need capacitors then we can choose any value here of the voltage 
as you want okay sir uh, sorry how are you hear my voice sir can you hear my voice uh code yeah, is so, can you just type your voice is very faint can you just type the question yeah yeah sir uh uh professor uh, yes uh, can i answer this question here the last yes. one yes. Yeah, yeah, sir. Sir. in unbalanced critical condition how it will work here? yes this is actually a really interesting question uh where will the power consume in lower modules since there is no passive elements i saw that this module here may consume power while the other is injecting of course this this source here must be bidirectional in order to consume such a power if you don't have here a bidirectional dc source you need to include here a resistor and for the lower module we can consider because the power here is quite low but this we need to talk very carefully maybe we talk later very carefully the inclusion of a resistor here to consume the power but answering your question this this source must be bidirectional in power it must be able to consume power if your dc source is not able when this power tries to consume power of course they will burn here the transistors okay if this must be bidirectional this would be the answer or alternatively including here a resistor but this is a challenge because inclusion the inclusion here of a resistor you consume the power and maybe this consumed power is higher than the switching losses and this makes the inverter unfeasible again okay this is something quite interesting question why could i try to employ here as a solution that i thought a time ago since this power here is the most prone to consume power you can apply here a bidirectional converters and return this power to the pcc and what is the cost of that the cost is of inclusion a high frequency transformer other transistors but remember this is four percent of the total power the inclusion of an inductor another transistor may be feasible because the power is considerably low okay this is valid only the, only for the lower module but this is a quite a great discussion how to solve the problem of the negative power but your question is that this this source must be by direction otherwise your transistor will burst okay hope i answered let's see where you was uh professor Koshik, was questions from you uh, yeah, just uh, one uh, last quick, quick question is that see uh, the thing is the the harmonic spectrum right or the THD of the uh, generated voltage right. So where you see the harmonics, see the harmonics will be there right. Like yeah, it is beautiful, uh, but where are the how does the spectrum look like? Yeah, we see the harmonics from this part here. Uh, not not in i am talking about in steady state of the staircase waveform see i am talking about the uh, the uh, pw uh, the the output voltage spectrum ah, in okay, steady okay. state right uh, let me return here where i am sorry this this one if you were talking about this. right 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 yes 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 Yes, you can see the spectrum here. It's low frequency content. Okay, this is 50 hertz per division. You see here lower content of the terminal voltage. Fortunately, when you combine them, when mm. your series connected off them, they cancel mm. each other, and the result mm. is just the fundamental. But these low frequencies component here are quite challenged too, because when you have a current with distorted uh current with um with harmonic content you have positive power at such a frequencies and this positive power goes to the dc sources i hope i answered your question but this has low frequency components and again they cancel each other to compose them mm -hmm. i understand wave. yeah okay thank you yeah. thank you thank you professor uh wakar 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 has a question professor tiago please look at the chat wakar Wakar, my friend, where is the question? I try to answer all the questions later by email. I can okay. promise you that. Wakar. Uh, Wakar. Yeah, Wakar. I can read. One of one of 
module has to transfer large portions of power to the grid, okay? Then it means we will need high rating devices at that module, okay? Then I think it should not be used for bug power because it looks like disadvantage. No, of course, it's the contrary. If you are processing this amount of power, bug power, with low switching frequencies, if you have a great amount of power, you can use other kind of technologies here, like thyristors. If you are trying to use a MOSFET to handle such a great amount of power, this may not be a good choice. But as this doesn't need high frequency switching, you can use here a very low switching capability and high capability of power handling, like the thyristor. Hope you understood. But it is actually the contrary. Buck power is good because the switching frequency is 60 Hz, 50, and this any transistor with low quality technology like the thyristor can be employed. Hope I answered. Yeah. Uh, Prof, we'll take just two more quick questions. I have put it in chat. Rishab, Rishab, you can unmute yourself. What question? Uh, how will the modulation index variation of the three modules affect uh, battery charging application? Basically, yes. it's the reverse power flow. When the power flow you are trying to reverse, how will be the modulation index? Yes, yes. This is like this is. Let me go to this that slide. Let me try to open this slide here. This yes. This is something very carefully, that's a challenge of this topology. If you have some limitations in the modulation index, you cannot overlap that. And the charging of the batteries will be quite uh, deteriorated due to that. You, maybe you need to have more time to charge the batteries. And the solution for that, if you have something modifications in the lower module, Notice that if you remove this lower module here, because you can assure how to handle the negative power, your operation region will be much larger. It will be from 0 0.78 to 1. Then you have positive power in the two upper modules, and the lower you are handling the negative power. And you need to assure that the modulation is within this range, but this is actually a challenge. If you need to limit your modulation index, maybe the charger the charge processing of batteries may be not so good as in another topologies. How do we charge the upper module uh, batteries? There is no negative part in this graph for the upper module. Yeah, okay. So in the upper module has just positive power. Let me return here because I'm considering where I am. This flow chart here, this flow direction. Okay, you just need to apply a negative power reference. Then this would be negative. I think uh, this is your question. Yes, if you need to consume power, just set a negative power reference. Then the power will be in such a direction. This charge is just for illustration. This is normalized, okay? How much is processed, but of course, any module here can process positive and negative power. It also depends on the ability of your DC source to handle both directions power. Okay. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Thank, so much. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please email Professor Chiago if you have any more questions on yes, yes. IEEE PELS and IES Society. I thank Professor Chiago for giving such a wonderful technical uh, discussion, technical presentation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, JC. And I ask you, actually, you can send me an email of your question. I think it's better. I just reply your email with your question. I'll be so glad to answer all of questions. Yes, yes, okay? yes. As we saw here a lot of questions. I have questions in the registration form. But again, please just type me the question and we can begin our discussion very friendly. Okay, thank you, JC. It's up to you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you.